Y'all yeah, know I am Mr. Dunn Troop, just in case you've been on the rock. This is Pezzer from SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> I live under the rock. Now I'm Starlito. <laughs> we all step brothers, of course. Yeah. And right now you're rocking with Concrete, Concrete Magazine. Indeed. This is Concrete TV. Concrete TV. <laughs> Nashville influenced my music because at the time, I mean, the, the strongest influences at the time I started making music was all I knew, really. I mean, I, my career didn't really take me outside of Nashville until a few years into making music, you know what I'm saying? So this is where I'm from. Nashville is where I'm from, born and raised. And so the influence is almost like, you know, it's there. I'm, I'm Nashville's own. I'm, I'm East Nashville was on, like that's, that was the time when I didn't leave East Nashville, you know, for maybe weeks at a time or, or whatever, like, to be so well traveled now, it's still like, this is where I come from, and, and so even moving forward, like, you know, it's a different slang, like, for, for where bro is from, from where anybody's from, you know, you kind of got your own lingo, you got your, like, I even see some things that we were saying in Nashville 15 years ago, it's hit records, you know, from like California artists and you know other other cities, other cultures, and so for for me, it's like I try to even moving forward. If there's something that that's popular, I mean, that's the song that that made it helped me make a name for myself early on, Great Goose. That was started my neighborhood, you know. That started amongst people that I was around every day, and we took that. You know, somewhere else to have an artist from Atlanta and an artist from Memphis gravitate to it. Like, they couldn't have known what we were talking about. Like, they didn't get the inside joke part of it. But before it was a phenomenon elsewhere, it was a Nashville thing. So, early on, like, from, you know, my um, predecessors, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I, I carried, helped carry forward a legacy for Nashville rap. You know, I mean, it was that wanting to be. I always wanted to be a, a pillar. I always wanted to be. When you think of Nashville, you say, "Hey, oh, you know, start little." Like that was always a goal, you know. So maybe that's that's probably the strongest influence. Wanting to wanting to represent it with. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. You know, we got. Uh, Bob and G, you got Three Six Mafia. You got you got your guy. Shout out to God. But. You know, with 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 all with those people being the people before me, that's you know, I just felt like of all things I needed to be able to stand in that space. And you know, like he said, it was pretty much the same for me. I never I never traveled until you know until music picked up. All I knew was Memphis and you know, the the you know, my surroundings growing up, my surroundings, you know, even till this day, you know, those are the things that, that you know that build my, you know, that build the, the, the lyrics in my records. You know, it's about what's going on around me. And you know, for the most part, Memphis is that. And, you know, I, yeah. where we from? They say if you can make it in Memphis, you can make it anywhere. So I want to say it was maybe like the second time we ever recorded with each other. It that's like that's like his favorite movie for some reason I can't really uh, fathom. But you know, we sat down and I don't know. It, like it kind of it can't just make sense if that if that makes sense. Forrest Gump is my favorite movie, but yeah, I mean, conceptually, like, yeah, I probably introduced the idea. I mean, it's not about a credit thing because it would take it takes both our equal input to make it great, to make it what it is. But yeah, I do really, really, really like that movie. Yeah, I think, I think it was late 2010 when we met. Uh, right, right around the turn of the year, 2011. Yeah, that movie yeah. came out in 2008. So, you know, me liking that movie, I probably was watching the DVD or watching on, you He's know, watching on the laptop. Yeah, or, or the, the whole studio. Time it, was recorded. it was the real shit out. Maybe, before maybe that's had, true. Before we came up with the I don't know concept, the weird, I don't know if that's the weirdest shit ever, but it, it might be true. Not, but it was uh, some weird shit. 
<laughs> but yeah, I mean, I like the movie a lot. I used to watch it a lot. I just thought it was interesting. I thought it was really nuanced. It was, it, you know, that makes sense. Like, there's just a lot going on. And on the surface, it's just comedy. You know, it's just silly. It's fun. But, you know, what I took from that, from because I was so familiar with the movie, and the way we met, like he said, he may have had these preconceived notions. Like, I wouldn't know what they were. Uh, but uh, like he also admitted, we were familiar with each other's music and, and enough to respect it. And, and I mean, I was a, a fan from afar. You know, I probably hadn't gotten introduced to the music that long before I met him, but I was into it. You know, and so it was cool enough when we got around each other that it made relative sense. And by the time we were in the studio, what inspired that idea? I don't know how familiar I was with the movie, but there. Those guys don't start off as friends, you know, or, or close. Like when they meet, it's it's awkward, it's tense. They uh, they they want to um, almost like have a problem with each other, and you know, it's like, uh, and that's rappers. You know what I'm saying? It's like this room, this studio ain't big enough for this city, this state, whatever. This market ain't big enough for the both of us. Like it's just look at the climate of things now. It's just easier to have a problem than it is to just get along and make money together or whatever. But, you know, with that, by the, that song, but that second session, I think it may not have been a second song. We've always done a lot of records when we work, but right. that second session, uh, matter of fact, uh, the first song we did together, uh, well, not the, the first song we did together, like it, in that second session, had Red Dot on the chorus. We were on Masterpiece, Ice Cream Man, yeah. Instrumental, it's called The Light Green Man. Uh, just something to connect the dots, but no pun intended. Uh, it was like I had that same epiphany from the movie, like when they finally decided to bury the hatchet and realized they had so much in common, and then the line goes like, "You want? Did we just become best friends? Yep. And you want to go do karate in the garage? Yep. And it was like from that point on, the movie they were like that." And you couldn't stop them, you couldn't tell them nothing. Like, everything they did together made sense to them, and that was all that mattered. They wanted to go build bunk beds. And in the studio in that moment, like, it was one of the things, like, bro, Red was singing on the, he was singing, like, almost, you know, mimicking a parody of the Master P record. And we just, like, tripping out about that. And our verses were so parallel without either of us hearing what each other wrote. You know, this upstairs at my cousin's house where, where my first studio was, and, and it was just like, it dawned on me like, man, this group, like, it was that same moment, like, whoa, like, this just works. Like, I don't remember the last time that I was in the studio, because from there we did another song, we did another song. I was sitting there like, hey, man, we should probably put something together, you know, all these songs are cool, but, you know, we should do something at large, and then... In that session, like man, I think it would be tight if we did like a Step Brothers mixtape and kind of theme and such. We can throw movie clips in, and, and you know, bros like all right. And that was pretty much the size of you know that's how the planning of it went. And two sessions later, the mixtape was done. We we had that session at my spot. We did I think five or six songs. A few weeks later, I went to his studio. He had a new uh, brand new studio in Memphis. And we did about five or six more songs. And I flew out to LA to meet up with them. Uh, and we knocked out about three more songs and mixed and mastered the album. Put it out like the next day or something. A couple days following. Like we mixed and mastered while we were out there. It was just like, yeah. but I mean, it was calculated. Although it just happened like that by the time we were finished, yeah. you know, we had a time type before. We decided to release the project on the same day that the movie released three years earlier. So, you know. Work. It worked. I mean, the movie came on TV the night that it came on FX. It was like network TV or cable or whatever. And so Step Brothers trended on Twitter. You know, Twitter was kind of a bigger deal at that time. And Step Brothers trended, and we put the album out an hour before the movie came out. The, the, the mixtape was an hour long. So by the time people were tweeting about the movie, we also have X amount of fans tweeting about right. the mixtape. And... It's just kind of, I think, timing, you know, timing is everything a lot of times. And yeah, the rest is history still in, in the making. But We never really 
You tell the truth, bro. We never really, <laughs> <laughs> we, we never really write together the, the way we work. Like I write all his verses, he writes all mine. Right. <laughs> but no, uh, the way we work, I never hear what he got until the recording mm-hmm. and vice versa. And and that's just, I mean it's hard to explain. It's not it's not a difficult process. I mean, we can turn the beat on right now and he catch something. If he catch something, he's gonna draw from it. And when he finish putting his pieces to it, you know, I'm gonna see what I can put to it. And I'm gonna add to it. If we wanna add more, we're gonna add more. No guy you know, we have no rules or guidelines, we just do what we feel like doing. And for the most part, it, it's the same way when it's vice versa. You know, if I sit down and you know, and I you know, I catch a vibe and and, and create something. You know, it pretty much worked the same way. But uh, when, when we work on the, the Step Brothers project, we we set aside a different kind of dedication for that. Because you know, of course, again, you know, we, we solo artists at the same time. And let's say if if he's working on a project. And we could be in two different spots. You know, he can, I mean, I turn around time is immaculate when it comes to each other. I don't know about how everybody else works. But if he sent me a record tonight, I know that, you know, nine times out of ten, this, this is important. He's trying to get, get a tape out. And he can get it, you know, I'm going to do the verse tonight. And, you know, I'm going to shoot it back to him. But that's when it's for solo projects. Whenever we're working on a Step Brothers project, we don't do any emails. Now, the way we rock, you know, I'm gonna make a call. Hey, you know, what's your what's your schedule this week? And you know, we gonna sync it. If we gotta meet in Nashville, we gotta meet in Memphis, or we gotta meet somewhere in between or on the road or whatever. You know, like you said, you can't even meet me in L.A. to to wrap up the first step of this. And uh, you know, we pretty much been, we pretty much record everywhere. And for the most part, like I was saying, you know, we don't we don't really sit and compare notes. We just I don't know. I guess you know he he, he put as much paint on the, on the canvas as he can, and then I go and I add. And like I said, you know if we feel like it need more to it, we we add more. We we hardly ever you know add other people into the mix. I feel like we got enough creativeness amongst each other to to make it work. But whenever we do that, it's not a you know we don't go and say hey man we need to put somebody on a song. So let's find a song and put somebody on it. That's never how we work. You know we sit down and if we hear somebody on it, then so be it. If not, then, you know. And that's just like three projects in, we haven't had a rap feature, you know, a rapping feature on any other Step Brothers projects. I think it's going on probably 50 records between the three projects, the two albums and the first mixtape. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, we had a few features, but they were always vocalists. They were singing. It was, it was harmony or whatever involved melodies. So, and that's the, you know, as far as two men rap, rapping go, goes, I don't. I mean, I don't really see anybody else. That's, you know, I'm not knocking nobody. I just, I, I, you know, this is a competitive thing, and I don't hear anybody doing this collaboratively on this level. You know, and so right. like with that, right. we don't go out of our way. You know, we're not trying to ride nobody's way. Like, like I said, we kind of found that magic moment and wrote that out. You know? Right. And I mean. On the other end, we probably turned down the tandem features because it was like, this ain't that. Like, right. You know, you can't. I don't even know if you can get a Step Brothers feature. Like, no. Well, I mean, some people do, but you know, it, I'm saying that's one of the things, like, I think. Yeah, that, well, yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why the brand is, 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 um, as valuable as it is because we don't just lend it out. And you know, we're not running around making stepbrother renditions. You know, for us to do a stepbrother, I mean, for us to do a stepbrother's feature, is you, it, it has to be a, a mutual, you know, a, a mutual a, affiliate. It's got to be somebody that, you know, we, we both respect, we both, you know, we both agree to lending the brand to, and, and that's got to be like a, you know, a give and take. Like, you know, that, that person compliments us as well as, you know, vice versa. We ain't just running around, you know, selling verses and somebody get to get a Step Brothers verse. It, it happened once, and we tightened up. Yeah, that, you know, trial and error. Actually, we both got paid, though. Yeah, it. and it was it was a cool record, too. <laughs> uh, we Neither one of us knew that each other was on the record. and But from that, you know, we, we learned that, you know, that our value 
is is extremely important and some you know of course that's something we, we've never been a group before when you know before being the group that we are so that was something you know we we when that's something we didn't know about yet and you know when, when it came up we were like hey you know what we, we ain't gonna allow people to to pull that one off again and so you know so if you hear a step brothers features it's because it was it was something worth doing so i'll say that yeah, it happens all the time. Man. Mm-hmm. It makes solo tapes. I mean, we're still artists, so, you know. I mean, he can come in with a record. I, again, I think that's one of the things that, that makes it, it. I think that's one of the things that makes it work. Because, you know, we're not, we not, I'm not his yes man if he's not my yes man. You know, if I make a record and he's not feeling the record, that, of course, that doesn't mean that it's not a great record. That just means that, you know, he don't feel like he fit on it. Or he don't, you know, he just don't like it. And when it happens, a lot of times, you know, a lot of times when we're working, like we said, we record a lot. So a lot of times when we're working, if that happens, then, you know, that's just another record because, you know, he still got a project somewhere in the, in, you know, in the fold. So that's nothing. You know, we just wind up with, you know, 30 songs and maybe two or three of them that, you know, that we both didn't feel like would fit on the tape or, you know, belong. it could be anything. You know, a lot of times it's not the fact that we don't like the record. Sometimes, you know, we we both feel strongly toward separate records. And, you know, when it comes to the Step Brothers Project, we try to make sure that every record on the tape is a, is a record that we both feel strongly about, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, as far as the leftovers, I mean, we, we tend to record a little bit more than we need. And right. I can remember, you know, for Step Brothers 2, uh, some of those records, were on Cold Turkey and some of those records were on, uh, I don't know what, well, I dropped the time. In the mean, in the meantime, mean first time, one. the first one, you know, I think it was two records that were, they were in the album pool, but, right. you know, as it went, I think, like, no review the first one. It, and even with that, that was like a strong record. I just felt like it sounded like a Star Leader record. Right. More than, even though we might have recorded in the same session with some songs you heard on Star Brothers too, it was, well, I'm on a chorus and I got two verses or, or whatever else, even the subject matter of the record. Like, we didn't really touch on that subject so much on Step Brothers 2, whereas we got a few songs like that on Step Brothers 3, you know. True. So, it's it's a mode. It's, and like I said about timing, like, sometimes things make more sense or it might make more sense to one of us or, mm-hmm. or either of us. And like, with this project, I know there was a few songs that I was digging when we recorded them, but by the time we recorded 10 more, I'm like, well, I don't like that one more than any of those 10, so maybe right. I should make the cut kind of thing, or, you know, and that's it being able to have that open input. Yeah. Because then when, we're not going to offend each other on that, but even if he's working on the song, I'm not going to stop him if I don't like it or whatever, and, and if, you know, he comes out, I'm like, all right, well, it's not for me, or even I don't like it, guess what, we're going to go to the next song. Right, I mean that's about it. You know, again, I think that's why. I, I that ain't the only reason. So a million reasons why we, you know, why we, why we men. But I think that, I think that's one of the reasons, though, that you know we able to communicate with each other and not take, uh, you know, not take offense to shit that that wasn't intended to be offensive in the first place. I don't think we've ever had an argument. But that's because you know we can, you know, we can communicate. Even you know he can feel one way, I can feel another way. And worst case, we're just gonna agree to disagree on whatever, whatever it is. And even with that, we you know we don't let that spill into what we got going on, or how we're working, or our relationship with each other. You know, we just work. You know, we both two grown men. We handle everything like grown men. And when we first started, like I said, you know, we didn't know each other for shit. I, you know, I had all I knew of him was his music and vice versa. And getting to know each other, I don't even know how long it's been, but it, it feels like I've known him, you know, known him my whole life. And I think it's so it's so unique that you know, like of course, you know, when I when I met Star, he had his own people, you know, he had his own team around him, and vice versa. And at this point, at this day and age, every person on his side of the fence and every person on my side of the fence, we are all on the same side of the fence. Like, you know, we're all one family. You know, it's, it's not a, it's not like, it's not a, a stars camp and trips camp together when we move, we one camp. You know, we don't, we don't name it or nothing. It just is what it is. And, you know, we all blend 
and it just works and that, just, that stemmed from me and him being able to get along and, and be more like brothers and, and you know we started we started like you know like step brothers like we was two people just dropped in in the same house and you know and we had to get along so you know it not so much that we had to get along just mean that was more of the vibe more like you know two rappers trying to coexist and we became brothers like you know i talk to this star all the time and a lot of times it really ain't about music and when it comes to Step Brothers projects, you know, that I, that's one of the greatest things about it. I get to just, you know, I get to be Don Tripp. I don't have to be, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to perform, I don't have to do his style of music, or I don't have to just stick to my style of music. We get to create a, 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 a whole sound that is the Step Brothers sound, you know. Cause I'm sure you can see that, you know, uh, his solo music and my solo music and the Step Brothers conjoined music, that's three different sounds of music. Uh, like I said, that magic moment in the movie, yeah. um, that we just become best friends. Right. You want to do a car out in the garage? Um, there was a track on the first Step Brothers called Car Out in the Garage, and it was, it was like a six, maybe oh. seven. Well, I'm talking about the original, the, the jacking for beats part. It was like okay, five yeah, beats. Yeah, yeah. It was like five beats, jacking for beats. You know, it just came on back to back on beat, you know, as if a DJ was spinning live and we're just passing the mic back and forth kind of vibe. And that was the, actually the first song that people heard from us. You know, we released that song as a teaser a few days before or a day before or something, Step Brother One. So, the mixtape or the EP that we just released February 9th was one it was to support uh, Red Dots album, Cell Blocks and Green Dots. His album dropped the same day. So we were just trying to get people to their phones and to their devices and in the digital realm because it was a digital album. I mean, we service physical copies, but that's where it is, you know. So we figured what better way, at, you know, Red Dots is home too. What better way to generate more fanfare? But what he's got going on, then to hey, let's put out some free music yeah. and feature him on it. Uh, like I said, we don't really do rap features. That was the first time that anybody's had a verse on one of our songs under the Step Brothers imprint. So it was in support of that, but it was also to remind people why they fuck with us, to remind people what like how we first arrived on your radar we was killing everybody else's beats it was back to back it was non-stop like you ain't heard nobody rap like this we gonna wrap circles around ourselves right mm -hmm. and just the rawness of it like it's like all right what better way we've been teasing and coming soon since that one mm -hmm. suit came out which was three and a half years you know you know rappers are pretty good with the coming soon. So. But but uh we almost turned into almost a running joke, but that was a way for us to like legitimize that like all right it's not coming soon, it's coming on March 15th. And right. you know, we said that a few times on that project. So it was to promote Red Dot's album and it was also to announce our release date for the Step Brothers 3. And we just wanted to take from where we started. And, you know, like reintroduce ourselves. It's not necessarily a reinvention, but just like, hey, remember us, you know? And I think it it accomplished that goal, you know? And even like we're right now, people's attention span so short. We put that out on February 9th, on February 11th, and that's another one, something's coming out, you yeah. know? When y'all gonna put something out? Like, I mean, people comment on my, on my promo when I say Step Brothers March 15th. And I had to come and say, when are you putting out some new shit? <laughs> I'm like, it says that, and you know, it literally says Step Brothers 3, March 19th. I mean, 15. March 15th. But you know, like you said, the, the, the attention spans are, are shorter now. And I'm like, I'm sweating in this chair. Like, I'm man, I, I, I think right. we, both, we both agree that the best way to promote music is with music. That's what we know. We're not, we're not in a drought. We got enough music. We make enough music. You know, we can't hurt us to put it. You know, there's no such thing as putting out too much music for us. So. Of course, growth for one. Um, it's polished. It's polished, man. I mean, yeah. 50 songs in, 
like bro, same thing. We've developed a, a sound, a cohesive sound together. Like, I think it's more soulful. Not to say that there wasn't that the first two didn't have that, those elements or that they weren't soulful. I think Step Brothers One is you know, kind of an expert on it, but I think Step Brothers One was more raw. It was just like, fuck it, let's rap. You know, we decided to throw off. Caution to the wind, throw the rules and the standards out. It doesn't have to be verse hook, verse hook, verse hook. It doesn't have to be 6, 10, 12 bars and four, eight bar chords. Let's just rap. You know, if we make a chorus, cool. If we don't, we don't. You like that beat? I like that beat. Let's do it. Yeah. And like I said, it was three studio sessions. So, although that, I think that was the beauty of it, we didn't pick beats for the namesakes. And at the time, like, bro had access to pretty much anybody in the game in terms of production. We just rapped on the shit that we thought was the, the dopest shit. True. And with two, after the success of Step Brothers One, we decided to make an album. We wanted to make something that would stand and be commercially viable, something that could stand next to our peers right. in the marketplace. Because you know, underground is the underground, and I mean, we still thrive there. But at some point we're doing music business, and at some point, I think we all had aspirations to make money off of our music. So seeing the demand and the reception we got is like, let's fine tune this and make it for, to do it like this. And I mean, I think our videos had a higher production value, even the music, you know, we took our time more. It wasn't three sessions that time. Like, right. we traveled more, you know, and just explore. We recorded part of that in the castle. I mean, Franklin, Tennessee, we record a majority of it in Atlanta, which yeah. by design, we like, let's get out of our comfort zone, let's get away from your studio in Memphis or my studio in Nashville, yeah. and just so we don't have nothing to do but rap, you know. And we made an album, like, the singles, I think, were our biggest singles. That, well, he's had a, a pretty big one, uh, solo. Uh, but. For me, you know, two of those singles out, Step Brothers 2, are just yeah, my two biggest records that, are, um, you know, my record, not not just features on other artist shit. Yeah. And, you know, it worked. We charted on Billboard. We pretty much set or uh, accomplished every goal or whatever we set out ahead of ourselves. And this time, I don't know how we managed to take the pressure or the expectation part off of it. I don't know if time did it or what, but I don't think it was any kind of relative like, all right, we gotta outdo that. But nope. I think, well, I believe that Step Brothers 3 is as good or better than one and two put together. And it's an album. I believe it'll stand the test of time and, yeah. and it'll be received as such. Similar to two, but I believe some of that rawness on the rap end from the first one is, is present. There's a song where we rap from the first bar to the last bar with no chorus and everything rhymes. Like the last line rhymes with the first line for three and a half minutes or so. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, people ain't doing that, especially not in tandem. Like, uh, we've got the storytelling records that we had from the second one. Like, but they're a little bit more in depth, or the, the content is edgier, or it's more socially relevant. And so, like I said, we took from what our strengths were on the first and the second, and you know, gave it wings, yeah. gave it legs, like took it somewhere else. Like, play, we played to our strengths, but it wasn't like for the sake of making it commercially viable. It was like, all right. We, we know we can do that, and we know we can do that. Let's just do it, kind of thing. And, and yeah, I'm I'm hella proud of, of Step Brothers Three. Yeah. Oh damn, that's a good fucking question. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say if my girl find out. That's I don't know if it's my favorite. It's my favorite right now, cause that's when you ask me that. That's the most dominant one that popped in my head. The reason that's my favorite one is because. It's, um, let me see how could I say this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it was a fun song to do. It was, uh, it was, you know, it, it was, it's when art imitates life or life imitates, 
So however that shit's supposed to go. It was one of those and uh and the the hook on it actually was I was just joking at first. And it just worked. And I said, you know what, fuck it. I'm finna lay the hook and he like, what is it? I'm like, kinda just gotta trust me. And when I came out the book. Matter of fact I did the hook and my verse all in one uh in one take actually. So if if you if we had a, a poor engineer, that shit would have sounded horrible. Cause you would have had to split. You know, that's a whole nother conversation. Either way, you know, I, I went in and did it, and you know, I, I don't know. I guess it's just vibe, and it ain't one of them records where I was just throwing super, you know, loud punchlines and shit. It just was, you know, it was me having fun and being honest at the same time, and and it works. I think that I think that's one of a lot of people's favorite records. Um. You mentioned an engineer. I'm gonna answer the question too, but we got the best engineer in the whole world. And, yeah. Um, I think people whose work is done away from the camera a lot of times don't get that just do, but Kevin Zuletta is a colleague of, of each of ours individually and collectively. Yeah. And he's a super engineer. He's based out of Miami, Florida. Actually, and, he does. Let me think. I don't know how many takes I got. I can't even try to figure that out. But I'll say everything I've dropped since like 2000, maybe since like 2010. I'd like to say everything I've put out since 2010 has been mixed and, and uh, well, I can't say all of them master bound, but everything's been mixed. Oh, shit, like 95% of it has been recorded by Kevin. Um, same, well, I, you know, I, I yeah. want to say, maybe not since 2010. Since 2000, since Step Brothers 1. Since, like, yeah. that, I met him working on Step Brothers 1. He was the lead, lead engineer for Trip. Yeah. And, I mean, I ended up hiring him as well. You know, and he's, he's yeah. Superman. Ever since then, man, he, I mean, I mean, just think about it. He handles all of Lilo's music, all of my music. And all of, all of this, the, right, and all of the Step Brothers. Red that's, Dots, that's New West, shit, the yeah. entire Trash Bear game, like, I mean, but... And even Piff. Yeah, that, but that's like one of those things we were talking about, like, the bond, like, yeah. the, play team so all. I met this guy, and like, by the time we recorded the project, you know, I was meeting people that would add to what I was Perfect. doing, you know, I met somebody that upgraded the sound quality. Yeah, you know, gave me a sonic consistency. And, yeah. You know, he was just an engineer, so I got I, I got off off uh, subject. But we don't all, often give people that flowers while they're here, so that yeah. just means something to me. But my favorite song from Step Brothers Three is uh, "Do What I Gotta Do." It's produced by Chef for Kitchen, and it's one of the last records that that we recorded. It's, I don't think it was the last song I recorded, but with my process, I always tend to lean toward the songs that, not the last songs on the tape or the projects, but the, whatever I record last, I'm out, like, cause it's almost like the fact that that gave me closure, that that mm-hmm. song or these songs made me feel like, all right, I've done enough or this is complete. I'm always a little, maybe it's just cause I do it. But Do What I Gotta Do is like a special record to me because the same way we was talking about when my girl finds out where you can just be honest, you can just be yourself. Uh, music, like, that, the record's very soulful to me, but it's like a purge of sorts. Like, music is probably the only outlet where you can confess to certain things and get away with it. Because, I mean, A, because so many people lie in their raps that... You know, it'll just right. probably fly over somebody's head if you're telling the absolute truth. And um, I've done that a few times with my music where where I felt like maybe the statute of limitations was up on something, and so I just decided to, to share my plight or share what I went through at a time. Or, and Because uh, it's somebody, without a doubt, going through something similar or going through that in real time or have gone through it. That and uh, that sound. you know, being being that that open is ultimately I think an asset to us being relatable to our audience and to our core. And that song, 
everything about it. Like, uh, I remember starting on it, just liking the beat. And sometimes if I like a beat enough, I try my best not to think about what I'm gonna say on there. I try to move off what I feel out like the beat. And uh, I was freestyling more or less, or just mumbling and walking around like a madman and ended up in a booth and probably dropped the first eight bars. And yeah, I, mean, I was just rapping. I remember at that time, like really liking the beat, and I kept like the first, the first verse here for me is the moment I'm talking about on that song. But it wasn't until he added his part that I was sold on like that I even liked it. You know what I'm saying? I liked the beat, but like I didn't hear it as a song. It was just an idea. And when he added his first verse, um. The first thing that he said, like, it gave me a chill, you know, because like I said, I was just rapping. And um, I was like, she wants me to give her my heart, but I don't even give a fuck, which is real. This is like, maybe not specific to someone at that time, but like, that's just a real, like, vibe. And uh, then he follows me, and the first thing he says is, uh, and I don't take my car apart until my baby's buckled up, which I mean rhymes, obviously, you know, and, you know, what we do with the back and forth. I don't know, it just gave me a chill because although we didn't have a chorus and I didn't, we don't normally think about necessarily what the song's about, because it's about life at large. We being ourselves, it's about us, it's about our experiences, humans, or, or sometimes it's very specific what we talk talking about. Yeah. But, in that case, that was one of them times where, like, I think I got the chill for knowing that that's our comfort zone to just rap about whatever you want to rap about. Like, it, like, crystallized our whole process, even though it may have been sound 50 by right then, or more than that, I'm sure. But I was like, damn, like, and I know him very, 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 very well. His children mean more to him than anything. It's like, so... I was, you know, I'm just a student of rap. I remember reading somewhere how important some some artist that I liked was like the first thing, the, the how you start your verse is the most important thing. And probably whenever I read that, I heard that I was so impressionable that I just started looking at rap different. When people start their verses out on some bullshit, yeah. I tune it out because I'm like, where are you gonna go from here? If that's, you know, you put your pen on your paper and that's what you came up with. So, you know. When he said that, like, I probably, I'm sure I heard the rest of the verse, but I was just kind of like, the wheels started turning as far as what the song would be about. And I immediately started mumbling and humming some shit, and there came the chorus. I probably had the chorus by the time he was finished. Yep. And, and strangely, at the end of his verses, like, but I do whatever I gotta do to make it home to my babies. And like I said, like, he had um, started and ended his verse on the same as that accord, you know, speaking of his children. And I'm like, I know everybody don't, you know, well, damn it, nobody knows us past surface level. Right. But, man, I was just as raw as, you know, and he said, do whatever I gotta do, and then the chorus follows what I was mumbling to myself, was, do what I gotta do. Right. So I was just like, the fuck did he know I was gonna say that kind of thing. So it was just like a magic moment over and over when making that song. Mm -hmm. And then, so after I finished the chorus, I tasked him with starting the second verse. I was just like, I just want to see where it goes from here. And it's just heartfelt, man. It reminded me of some of my favorite songs from Step Brothers 1, which were like serious records for as much playful shit, as much shit we did to cater to the movie element of it. Right. It was those songs like Life and Pray For Me. And you know what I'm saying? Like, this is by titles, like, this is some heavy shit. Like, and. That by the time it was the second verse, I was like, yeah. And on my own second verse, I kind of dug a little deeper into like what makes me who I am today. You know, some of the experiences I went through that 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 kind of tempered the, the way I move, the way I act, the way I react and respond and shit. And I just felt like as a record, like that's us. You know what I'm saying? That's who we are more than anything. And it's like, if I'm talking about if something's got a violent undertone, like, the re as the record suggests, like, you do what you gotta do. Like, desperation, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, you know? And on every level, whether that's grinding, hustling, surviving, 
parenthood, you know, and even fame or, or notoriety. Like, I'm uh, too busy watching you. That's why I don't watch the news. Like, that's my life. Like, I don't, I don't have time to pay attention to what's going on down there for having to focus in on. Because in a given time, everybody in the room might be looking at me. You know, and that's not everybody's struggle. But I think the way that we kick it, everyone can relate to it. Everybody can, you know, feel our struggle. So that that's why that's my favorite song. I like the one that you mentioned too. I think that's because we competing with ourselves. I mean, not with each other, but I mean, you know, like when I go in and do a record, I, I don't want it to sound like any other record I've already done. And sometimes that would that would mean, you know, I would give you a different flow. A lot of times, you know, you don't want it with a different flow. Or, you know, I could just say some shit you, that you shouldn't say or you wouldn't say. I, me personally, I don't give a shit. I'm saying whatever I feel like saying. But I think, I think that's kind of where it comes from. Like you know, we we I don't know. It's kind of like like we both trying to paint a picture, but we're not using crayons. If, you know, we know we're not. You know, I know he don't got. If you get what I'm saying, theoretically, he, you know, I know when he come in in the, in the studio, he's not bringing a box of crayons, and I'm not either. So you know, we, we go in with the most expensive paint you can you can find. And, you know, the shit works. But as far as like, you know, we ain't in there like, man, we gonna kick the hottest fucking uh, rap bar they gonna be in the source or some shit. And I, don't, mean, I, don't think, I don't think that far into it. But that goes back to our origins. Like, from day one, like I knew he could rap his ass off before I met him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That was, I knew that. That was like, that was my first impression. You know, aside from me, I'm like listening like, what? Like, what is, what is rewind that? What is this like? Who is this kid? You know what I'm saying? So, and you know, like he let me know when we met that he was familiar, you know, up to speed with, with my music or more or less my catalog at that time. Um, I just think we we always ain't like even prior to meeting each other, it was a certain like, lyrical integrity. Like we're not. I don't know. We don't sometimes make the catchiest records because they're. I don't want to say too many words, but but for our, you know, ability to play with the language, the lyrics, the words. Right. I mean, and that's that's just give and take in rap. Like you have people that are over the top lyrical, and then you have people that make super great music and don't adhere to, you know, they may say the same ending word three or four times in a row, but I mean that's easier to program or whatever else and they give and take. But for us, it's like. Just doing us. I mean, I think he was an incredible lyricist aside and before, you know, before he linked with me and, you know, and I, I was doing what I was doing, rapping, using the alphabet and shit back to 2006, you know what I'm saying? Rapping about sports teams and shit and playing with similes and metaphors and punchlines and shit since I don't want to age myself, but like since high school times. So, uh, you know, putting it together where I, for where we're similar, I think it's an enhancement. Whereas sometimes when people rap, they sound alike. But I mean, our similarities yeah. are enhancement. Where we're different, I think is is where we are, that's that's the strength. That's right. really the core of it. Because on a given song, like even through this project, like I don't think we ever sound alike. You know what I'm saying? I'm high and sleepy and. He has an incredible be. amount of control over his voice. Yeah, I might be, you know, I don't know. It happens. That's how it happens. I can be relaxed on the record. I can be pissed on the record. Shit just happened how it happened. But like, like he was saying, I think, I think it works because of the the the, the, 
the differences because we're pretty much night and day. And it's it's some records, uh, a lot of records, a lot of records. He, he could go in and, and we can take the exact same story without saying the exact same words, hmm. and we can give you two different point of view, two different um, perspectives yeah. of the exact same thing. Uh, and that's not because we sit down and do it on purpose. You know, that's just because he's a different person. And I'm a different person, and you know, we want to go in. He's not trying to adhere to what I'm for to say, or, or you know, how I would come on the record. He gonna go in and do him. Uh, and when I go in, I'm gonna do the same thing. And I think, I think that it's so natural that we do it subconsciously. Like you know, you just you go in, and do his shit. I go in and do my shit. You sit back when it's done. Like we don't, we don't really even play the verses back until we finish. We finish. We run the whole record back. We sit. We live with it for a second, and then it's on to the next record. And like you know, we do so much recording that a lot of times we we don't really uh, we don't really live with the records because you know as an artist you, you listen to your music too much it get old to you before it get old to anybody else. But you know when we do sit back and listen, like a lot of times I I know for certain it's happened. I I give him a call like man you killed so and so you know man I, you know I just of course I've heard this before but I sat down and I heard it. And you know, you, you snapped on it, and vice versa. You know, he, he'll give me a call and say the same thing, and we'll be out and about. And you know, it just happened. I think that you know, I think that's another one of the things that, that makes our relationship great. That you know, we, we're not shy when it comes come to you know, to commending each other. And like you said, you know, people rarely get the flowers, you know, while they can still smell them. And with that, I think that's something that, that we have no problem doing, you know, and even if it's a record where. You know, it don't have to be a record that we own together. If I hear a record and, and I think it's the greatest shit from him, you know, of course I'm gonna let him know. And when it comes to the, you know, like you were saying with the lyricism shit, I think when we look at the records, we don't really put that into perspective. Like, you know, we ain't looking like, man, you could have used more syllables or some shit. <laughs> we, you know, we just listen. And I know when he go in and record, he's being true to himself. And yeah, vice versa. That's, that was, that's, I think, like you said, perspective. Like there, when he made that that comment, I think light bulb went off in my head. I thought of two records that I think they're both great records. Leash on Life with, with featuring Kevin Gates. Um, we were present when we recorded our verses, but they weren't recorded in the same session. I recorded it was one of those late nights. Everybody ready to go, and I'm like, hold on, now, let me drop this verse real quick. And he was there, and I dropped it, and it was like, oh, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. And it got saved. And it was probably two, three months before we pulled it back up. And when we pulled it back up, Kevin Gates just happened to be walking through the door while he was doing it. But with that record, it was like, I started my verse saying, and shooting up movies, and shooting up schools, young black fools ain't the only ones that suit up with tools. And his entire verse is about a kid shooting up at school. The why, the you know, the, the how it, it came about happening, and I remember sitting in the studio like, just like thinking this guy is just insane. I mean, <laughs> because I knew he hadn't heard the song over in three months. You know, right. like you said, and like we don't just listen to the shit over. It's not like I didn't listen to any of the songs from Step Brothers Three until the whole thing was done. Same, like matter of fact, we didn't bounce in though. Yeah, we we didn't even bounce bounce the songs. Yeah, we we don't uh, bounce the songs down either. But so with that, I'm sitting there. I'm like, so I don't feel like he chewed on this for three months. And kind, and even if he did, like I wouldn't give a damn. But I was like, I remember for one second thinking, man, that's not what this song is about. Because I was making a like my little two cents, my social commentary that like. Blacks, when I said we, you know what I'm saying? It was kind of the racial divide of things. Mm-hmm. And like, blacks aren't the only ones that, you know, end up doing crime or whatever yeah. else. Like, it, we're all the same. That yeah. was a roundabout way of saying that. Right. And, you know, I touched on a number of things, but like, when I was sitting there and I was listening, I was like, for a second, I was a little lost. Not like, this is whack or anything. But then I sat back and I was like, who's ever done this before? You know, that was my next thought. And then, like I said, Kevin Gates walks in and he looks at me and he goes, 
man, that sounds like you done did that shit before. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was like, he was like well, he, I know somebody. I never knew that. Yeah, I never knew that. He was like, man, he doing like, damn, like, you know somebody that, that did that. Like, damn, you know, and I felt like that was a compliment to his storytelling, his detail, you know, his lyrics. And like I said, I did for a split second thing. I was not lost, but I was just like, it's not, this song is not about it. Shooting up a school, that's not what I meant. Like, but it's almost just the irony of the way that we work. Cause right. before I could even think any more of it, the next thing I thought was, damn, prospectively, who could have took it there? Cause it, even I never thought to. And I said the shit that maybe inspired the thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then five minutes later, I look over and, and Kevin Gates is singing to himself. Right. And you know what I'm saying? Like we didn't ask him to get on that record. Like we said, we didn't. Oh, we gotta get this feature. Oh, yeah, the song was three months in the making and just happened to be finished that night. Just timing. Yeah. So from there, I was like, then as you know, the chorus as a chorus should just fuse the whole thing together. And it's, to me, it's like a perfect record. And the other t one is from Step Brothers Three. It's the Thirteenth Amendment song. And. Mm. Uh, I was inspired to make that kind of record from the 13th uh, documentary, things on Netflix. And uh, then the, the track, Street Symphony, you know, Lowe was like, playing beats left and right. Then we did Girl Find Out that same yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. And he did produce both of those records. Clearly he had watched Get Out before it came out. Nah, nah, well, maybe he'll write it. So, no, I'm talking about when he, was, when he made the beat. Well, see, that was the thing. It was one of those things like, this guy was like a slave chant or something at the beginning of it. And he started to play it and he was like, nah, like, yeah. you know, he was like really, you know, it happens. People say they guess themselves. Okay. And he was like, oh shit, like he clicked on that on accident. So he's going on the mouse and moving the mouse around trying to find something else to play. And we was like, what was that? Is that, you already saw that? That was my assumption, like the beat was gone. Right. He was like, nah, like I ain't, I ain't really think. I was like, stop thinking. Just play it and let us say we don't want to rap on it. Yes. It takes 15 seconds for us to figure it out. And, and when he played it, it was just kind of went in the booth, you know what I'm saying? And the same deal, like, I was rap like, to me, when I'm thinking, based on having seen that documentary and wherever else from the music, I immediately went to systematic oppression to, you know, the government and, you know, the way things are structured and people from where we're coming from are fighting a losing fight in the uphill battle and versus the powers that be and he's making all these slave slavery in your windows. My wordplay was like centered around there, all the whips and chains that you slave for when it was all said and done, you should have saved more. Um and he comes on the first verse and raps about the music industry. And I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of opposite of the other time, I, I kind of sat back and was like, damn. I, I mean, even though I've been more or less, uh, my first concrete uh, feature, I had my slave papers on on my shirt. Uh, I had my a recording contract, I'm about a 6 x yeah, about nine and up. But yeah, with that, I'm like, wow, like, same thing, like, perspectively, like, who, yeah. you know, it was, but that's, that's his story, you know and, what I'm saying? And it playing, it just, it just right. happens. Right, same deal, like, I didn't hear what he had written over there, I came with the chorus and got out of his way, pretty much, and I was like, damn, he thinks slavery, he thinks recording industry, and I'm like, and that's very, 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 very real, like, I could understand how himself, myself, plenty of other artists might feel that way. And I'm like, damn, that's deep because maybe that'll be a warning to somebody else that thinks this is sweet, that thinks right. this business for, is for the fine of heart. Like it is, you know, and, and it took me hearing it. And like, so I'm, I'm a fan first. Mm -hmm. So I sat down, I was like, damn. damn. Like, and what made it so powerful is because he was being true to who he was. Mm -hmm. And perspectively, lyrically, you know, like I said, the, the song had wordplay all throughout it. And it was a very, very deep fucking record. Mm -hmm. With that, even though I heard that first, like, I mean, and I agree, that's not the perspective that I took. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the government, legislation, and gentrification, and you know, and how uh, more of my peers get prison sentences than college degrees, and you know, 
all these allusions to systematic things, and government, you know, and that's just we're we can be on like opposite ends of the spectrum and still be on the same page. If that makes sense, and, and lyrical, nonetheless. I think we got some of the best rap in the world. I think um, Tennessee stands tall to tall. Like there are only two markets in these tall states that. For, for my preference, I'm not down in no, nobody's coast or cities or regions or whatever, but I think the, the rap scene in Tennessee stands along, or stands alongside Louisiana and Georgia. And that's the majority, those three states probably make up 90% of my iPod as far as rap goes, you know, especially in the last 10 years. Mm. And, and, uh, that's to say, like, I mean, the question is about Tennessee, like, I mean, I'm from Nashville, young buck came from here, performed very well commercially. Uh, I mean, not to mention the people from before then, but like, like I said, if you just take the last 10 years, you got Yo Gotti, Juicy J, Young Dolph, Moneybag Yo, Black Youngster, uh, Isaiah Rashad out of Chattanooga, uh, Tut is another cap in Chattanooga I rock with. So like, there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of talent. Like, we so, might not, not to mention the people who are still on the radar right now. It's, right, right. It's, it's a lot of talent in, in Tennessee in right. general. So I agree. And yeah, I mean, you just go down the line and there's tons of it. You know, it makes me proud to be from here. I mean, even I, I look at you guys, Catalog, like the Jelly Roll, who mm. I feel like has found his way. And I saw him on TV. He's part of the Nashville feature, I think, on, uh, uh, yeah, Viceland. Um, Noisy, yeah. I mean, stuff like that. Like, I'm from here. Like, Jelly Roll's dope. Like, we come from rap battles out of limits on Sundays, like, 15 years ago. Like, he worked hard as hell to get to where he is. And that's, that's the common thing. Like, there's a lot of self-made, there's a lot of self-contained entities that come out of Tennessee. Like, I don't, to the point like, who has a deal in Tennessee? Who's got, you know what I'm saying? Who's got a traditional deal? If they, if, you know, there's a few of them, but there's a lot of people making noise too. I mean, and Memphis has always been that way. It's always been a, a, a hot spot for music, even back to our childhood. Like I said, I'm not yeah. taking nothing from anybody that came before, but I, I think on the here and now, like Tennessee stands neck and neck with, with anywhere. It's just, I don't know if we get, like, I think we're getting the acclaim because everybody, like, everybody's making money too. You know, for majority of the names that I name is, they're yeah. successful. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're doing their thing and, and hustling. And so with that, like, I don't, we don't get the collective notoriety. I don't, like, that noisy piece that was kind of wayward, not just on some hip hop stuff, but, like, there should be a Tennessee, you know, piece uh, at large, because that's legit 10 top tier quality artists. You know what I'm saying? And none of them really sound alike. I think that's what's cool. Like I said, we don't sound alike. You don't sound like any other rappers from Memphis that's popping. You know, we're from a different place, so yeah. maybe that makes sense. But you don't sound like your guy. You don't sound like Money Bag. Yo, you don't sound like Black Youngster. You don't sound like Dolph. You know, none of them too much sound like each other. True. So uh, you know, Tennessee. Uh, it's. I, I wish that we could. I, I wish we could all put it together. You know, I think that would that would make people take notice. When Houston had that moment, you had you were introduced to three artists at once. You know, they were on each other's singles, and then you had a guy over here that had a number one single, and time, like I said, like, and, and time might be now for Tennessee. I mean, Tennessee has put out the best music, best rap music in the first quarter of 2017, without a doubt. I can agree. I can agree. That's rigor mortis. When I get tired of running this shit, like Clinton Portis, I'm making sure I got my slice like Ninja Tortoise. And nigga, I'm going to rock my ice. No. Straight up, I think, I think everything I've been through is what makes me who I am right now. I think if I hadn't gone through the, you know, the, the most famous moment of my career, you know, the, the, the situation with not being able to see my son, I think if I wouldn't have went through that, I may not have 
have, uh, I may not have the same value for being a father. It doesn't make any sense at all. I think, you know, I think things like that build your character. If I could go back and change it, I'd just fuck it all up. Kind of like, oh, it's just the uh, butterfly effect. Yeah. So, you know, if I could change something, I would I'd go back and, and do the same shit over again. Right. It is what it is. Uh, yeah, I, I, can, I feel that. I, I try not to regret much. But if I just, for the sake of the question, if I had the opportunity to go back and advise myself, I think I would tell myself to trust my, trust my own judgment. And that over the years, like by the time we met, I was in a space where I'm like, if I got an idea, I'm gonna move on it before I share it. Number one, because you know I learned the hard way what other people do with good ideas. Mm -hmm. um, but I would just, you know, affirm, reaffirm with myself that man, you you know what you're doing, and you know. Move on, you know. Move with your ideas. Like I've, I've given away some brilliant ideas. I've just on the, the from the um, from the brain, just having a wherewithal and, and you know creative energies. Like yeah, that would be it. It's, it's not like bro said. I, I wouldn't even. It ain't, I don't even think about the worst of the worst or the bullshit. I think about all the times that I second guess myself. And then the shit worked later, or you know, just like I was wasting energy, I was wasting time, and I could have just, you know, doing what I'm doing now. And I get an idea, if I value it, if I think it's a good idea, I, I move on. So, I mean, I've proved myself wrong before, but yeah, I mean, nobody like I'm the I'm the expert on Starlito and all like that, so I feel like I wasted wasted time leaning on the judgment of others at the time, and so. Like now, like, you know, uh, I just do what I gotta do. This is Concrete TV. Concrete TV.